more time because I know we have a lot of people who have just jumped on. I'm so excited to see these numbers. Welcome. We've let everybody in a few minutes early. Um, the Zoom slide here, I'll show you where to find your uh, mute button and raise your hand. We'll be talking about that again in just a moment. Um, but we are going to ask everybody to stay on mute throughout the beginning of our session. In, and then at the end, we will um, use the raise hand feature and or the chat to send your questions. And um, we will be able to call on you again from the hand raise feature or from um, just using the question no. that you type in the chat. If you have any questions now, please feel free to drop them in the chat while we're waiting. And we're going to get started here promptly at seven o'clock. I won't be in the picture there, hold on. Let's move the job over this way, sorry. Okay, good evening, everyone. Bishop Haynes, delegates and clergy, Chanko's current and former board members, and all of our Chanko families, welcome. My name is Nancy LaCure Beach, and as president of the board of directors at Chanko and the Dames, it is my privilege to welcome you here tonight. We are delighted that you are with us to hear our presentation for this year's annual council. I suspect that many of you are here tonight because you are delegates to council and have a responsibility to follow all the reports this week and all the presentations. So congratulations. And others of you, I believe you're here because you found something special at Chenko and that has kept you connected to us over many, many years. And I know there are the very special ones of you here tonight who are waiting with bated breath to find out how your children can return to Chanko for summer camp 2021. But before we get to the fun stuff, it goes without saying that 2020 was a challenging year and Chanko, for Chanko it was no different. According to the American Camp Association, of the more than 15,000 camps in the United States, 80% of overnight camps and 40% of day camps were closed last summer. And the industry faced an estimated loss of $16 billion in revenue. Therefore, let me take a moment to acknowledge the contributions of all the incredible people who were miracle makers for Tango this year. First, our dedicated all volunteer board of directors and our extremely capable staff led by Gareth Calfus. Woo, Gareth! Their hard work in this critical time ensured that we would remain fiscally solvent during a financially distressing time. And Bishop Susan Haynes and the diocesan staff, through their encouragement and partnership throughout the year, they helped us steady things during the rough waters. And because of their hard work, tonight's gonna be about good news. So you're gonna hear from a number of our Chenko friends who will share some fantastic information. And just know you don't have to remember everything. We say tonight that we go through and present, all you need to know is our website, chanko.org. Everything will be there. Just like our exhibit table if we were all enjoying annual council in person. So thank you for letting us bring the spirit of Chanko to you. But no, you have Chanko forever because Chanko is you. Now I'll turn things over to our board member and tonight's producer of the show, Julie Edwards McDaniel. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much, Nancy. And thank you everybody for being here real quick. I wanna get through everybody. So just wanna point out again on this Zoom slide to please remain on mute throughout the, um, be this beginning portion and please find your raise hand uh, button for the question and answers later. Um, for most of you, if you have the up-to-date Zoom, that'll be here under reactions. It could also be on your participant list if you have an older version of Zoom. Right. 
And the last thing I'm going to talk about before I hand it back over to continue on here is the Chanko raffle. I hope many of you are here for that as well. We're giving away three different 50% off sessions. So one summer camp session, one vestry retreat, and one retreat of any type here at Chanko. Um, if you win, you'll get 50% off of that. And so if you would just I know many of you have dropped your name into the chat to everyone and that's fine. Lexi will find those. But if you haven't yet and you want to find Lexi's name in the chat, she's one of our co-hosts and just send her a quick chat with your name and which one of those raffles you want to be in. She's putting them into three different buckets and we will pull those names tonight. Um, and please, we want you to be here and present to win. So text Lexi and then stick around. All right, I'm gonna move us on to our prayer. Cornelia, can you get us started with a prayer tonight? I will be glad to. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God of retreats and camps, we give you thanks and praise for the ministry of Chanko to the Diocese of Southern Virginia. We pray for all the staff members of Chanko that provide a safe space for spiritual and physical growth and enjoyment in this beautiful area of your creation we call Chanko. We pray for all who visit Chanko. May their time there be what they need to go forth as Christ's hands and feet in the world. Be with us now as we discuss the future of Chanko as they fulfill their mission to promote the spiritual and physical wellness of all God's people. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, thank you so much, Cornelia. Garrett, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Thanks, Julie. And thank you so much, Cornelia, that was beautiful. I just wanna give everybody a quick overview of what tonight's program will look like. Julie's going to show us a camp video, and then you're going to hear presentations from a number of folks on different pieces of Chanko's programming. After that, we'll hold a raffle, which, as Julie mentioned, gives folks a chance for 50% off of one of a few different types of activities here at Chanko. And then we'll end with questions and answers. And at that point, if people want to drop off, they're welcome to, but we'll try to stay as long as people have questions. So thank you so much. All right, thanks, Gareth. I am going to share that video now. Um, do know that when you're watching videos in Zoom, that it's possible that the um, it doesn't play too well. And to help it play better, turning off your video may assist with that. Here we go. Everything that we do, you're either overcoming something and trying something new or learning something to take with you outside of camp, and I think that's really important. A couple of things that you tell that first-time parent are that it's going to be harder on the parent than it is the camper, probably. My mom thought I'd be more nervous and homesick, but I wasn't really, because it's just you're doing so many activities here. You're not really thinking about missing home. This is a happy place that no one's going to be mean to you and everyone's accepting. This is a place where kids can kind of escape and feel safe and be themselves. I've heard a lot of kids say that they've sailed here for the first time or canoed and kayaked and then they go home and they go on a trip with their parents and their parents are super impressed that they know how to do these things. Sailing is one of the things that always hear about as favorite activity for the campers and it's special here at Chanko we're right on the James. Our water's an important part of camping programs so to have that sailing on the James is really nice. I grew up on a lake and we'd sail and we'd get to learn all those types of skills and that's something that's not necessarily available at every single camp and so it's one of the things that sets us apart and it's also a kind of a unique set of skills that not everybody growing up gets to have. But I think once they're out on the water and they can feel how it's working and just understand how to capture the wind, then they do a lot better at it. 
I think Chanko is just a really fun place, but also it's a fantastic place for spiritual growth and even mental and emotional growth. With the younger ones, it's normally trying something new that they were afraid to do. Sometimes with the older ones, it's really learning how to work with other people and live in a small space with people you might not get along with. I definitely think the camp setting is beneficial to like maturing and just learning how to be around different people and still have a good time and still be a good productive member of the community. Rock climbing is really fun. I, I like to go on the easy side because I'm better at it. Well, I love high ropes because it's always people are just encouraging you. And then once you do whatever activity it is, you realize that it's not so bad after all because, I mean, you're, you're in a harness, so even if you do fall, you're going to be fine. There you go. You got it. You got it. Yeah. I'm not really afraid of heights, but I looked down and I was like, okay, this is, this is really high. And I was like, okay, I'm just really scared, so. It's really scary, but it's actually really fun, and my friends helping me and everything. Three, two, one. It's kind of a challenge to do it, so I have more confidence now that I did that. The friendships here, I mean, they last a lifetime. That's really an experience that you want your camper to have. It's really just the connections you make here, and my best friends that I've had my, my whole life have been from here. Come for the sailing, come for the zip lines, come for the rock wall, come here to connect with God, come here to get closer with friends, come here to like basically love yourself more and then be more open and social with everyone. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. As I go to share our PowerPoint again, I wanted to also let you know that as each person speaks, I'm going to be spotlighting them, which if you like gallery view, it's going to take you out of gallery view for a second, but you can always go back. It'll keep that person on your main screen. And also you can move, um, if you hover between the pictures and the slides, you can kind of resize it to see if you want to see more of the speaker or you want to see more of the slide to make it fit for you. Gareth, would you like to continue on? Absolutely. Thank you, Julie. And just a reminder to people that they can see that video, as well as our year-end review and capital campaign presentations for annual council on the Chanko website. Now, at this time, I'd like to talk for just a couple minutes about summer camp. We're incredibly excited that Governor Northam announced just today that overnight camps may begin operation on May 1st. We're working diligently with great optimism for an exciting summer on the banks of the James. This work is being done in communication with our bishop, and the Diocesan Medical Advisory Group. And we're also getting guidance for a safe, fun summer from the American Camp Association and state officials. We know that Camp Chanko will need to look different this year. While there are still unknowns about what the guidelines and policies that regulate camps will be, campers can still look forward to many of their favorite activities. Here are just a few ideas of what our early indications are that safety protocols might include. Perhaps reduced capacity, cohort groups, basic COVID protocols, or health screenings. Reduced capacity. When camp registration opened, we started with a limited capacity and wait lists forming for some sessions. With today's update from the governor, Chanko will expand our registration capacity. Campers on wait lists are being called on a first come first serve basis and their families notified of the new spaces being made available. Since we know that families are eager to register and reserve your space at Camp Chanko for 2021, we have an updated cancellation policy so you can register now with confidence. This and other policies can be viewed on our website by clicking on the View Our COVID Policies tab. Cohort groups. One modification that Governor Northam announced today is the introduction of something called cohort groups with a maximum group size of 25 campers. This means that campers will likely not be in close contact with campers from other campsites, but will participate in activities, meals, et cetera, with members from their own campsite. We're still working to imagine what some of our favorite evening programs might look like in this environment. Basic COVID protocols include things like hand hygiene will definitely be necessary. Governor Northam also announced that campers and staff will need to wear masks when indoors and when six, six foot distancing cannot be maintained. Health screening. In 2021, 
we're planning to provide health screening, including COVID-19 testing for all campers and counselors. While the details are still being determined, all registered campers are receiving the forms that PMH Laboratory requires for administering such tests. If anybody has questions, they can send us an email or give us a phone call about this or any other forms. As 2021 camp plans are developed, we'll be keeping our camper families informed with Chanko Chatter newsletter, emails, town hall Zoom meetings like this one. I wanna make sure you all know right now and can add to your calendar that our next meeting will be at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, March 31st, as we share any new updates that have become available. Information about that Zoom will come out on our website, Chanko Chatter and social media pages. At this point, I'd like to introduce and turn the program over to Lexi Barnhill, our Director of Programs. Hi, I am Lexi, as Gareth said, I'm the Director of Programs here, and that, um, for me, I have now been the Director here, or the Program Director here, for a year next week, which is exciting, um, and so I'm super excited to see what camp is going to look like this summer. I've heard so many great things about um, a lot of the activities that we have here, some of the favorites I've heard about, zip lining, uh, we have five zip lines on the property, uh, paddle boarding, worship on the bluff, and especially I am super excited about seeing the new ropes element, um, mainly because it's new, but also because everyone else hasn't seen it either. So I'm super excited that we all get to experience that together. Um, we're already working on making sure that this summer is going to be amazing, and that includes hiring a great staff. We're still hiring. So if you know anybody who's looking for a summer job, send them our way. We'd love to interview them and see if they're a good fit for our program for the summer. Um, and, and with that, I'm gonna pass it over to one of our super awesome counselors, Pim, who's here to tell us a little bit about being a counselor at Tango. Uh, hello, my name is Mary Pembroke Pem Kaler, and I am from Norfolk, Virginia, and a member of Christ and St. Luke's Episcopal Church, where I have served as a nursery caregiver, volunteer, and acolyte. My involvement in the church and subsequently my affiliation with Chanko have provide, provided me with unique opportunities. I credit much of my growth as an individual to attending and working at Chanko. At 10 years old, I anxiously walked into camp, never having been away from home longer than a few days, let alone two weeks. I'll be honest, uh, I still remember those first two days, those first few days, they were rough. I was a shy, anx anxious child who was attached to her mom's hip. Little did I know that by taking this big step, I would enter into a community of friendship, love, and trust that would change me forever. My homesickness was short-lived and I made many lifelong relationships and opened up to a community of people who loved and respected me. I think back fondly to making friendship bracelets in the chalet when the days were too hot for free swimming, playing slip and slide kickball with other campsites, stargazing, challenging myself on the high ropes course elements, and laughing until my lungs hurt when Brooke, Annabeth, and I capsized our sailboat for about the hundredth time. As Gareth knows, I could go on and on. Um, however, most importantly, I was able to connect with my, to my faith and foster a relationship with God through nature. Every year I kept coming back, I found a new part of myself. I became more outgoing, comfortable, and allowed my true goofy personality to shine. Despite getting older, I did not want to leave this community that had taught me so much about life, spirituality, and myself. So in the summer of 2019, I applied to be an Eagle. I was overcome with joy when Nathan, the program director at the time, offered me a paid position as a lifeguard and counselor. I was so excited to take on the challenge and be at camp again, this time behind the scenes. Throughout the summer, I had the opportunity to supervise campers of all ages. It was difficult at times, but when it got hard, I reflected on my own experience as a camper and remembered the counselors that had the greatest impact on me. Those most memorable were compassionate, supportive, and encouraging. They listened, were relatable, and helped me when times were tough. As a staff member, I acquired valuable skills such as responsibility, problem solving, and communication. These attributes have shaped me into the person I am today, and I have been able to implement them throughout my life. 
As a result, I've become more outgoing and accepted opportunities that the once shy, anxious 10-year-old girl might not have. I am now an honor student at Randolph-Macon College and an active member and director of Alpha Gamma Delta. If it weren't for my experience at Chanko, I might not be where I am or who I am today. I am able to step outside of my comfort zone because of Chanko. I am able I have friends from all over the world because of Chanko, and I am a hardworking and caring individual because of Chanko. I feel more connected to my faith because of Chanko. Chanko accepted me, so I was able to accept myself. Thank you so much. Pam, thank you so much. That was really wonderful and reminded me a lot of my camper and counselor days. So appreciate all of that. All right, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Reverend Robert Marshall. Take it away. Sorry. Hi, we've heard some wonderful things about uh, Chanko tonight. And I think we've heard mostly about the uh, part what a lot of you probably have shown up because you're excited about the camp for this summer. But what I'm here to tell you tonight is that you're never too old for camp. The reason I say that is because I grew up doing a lot of the things that I've heard these young people saying they do at Chanko. I did not grow up in this diocese, but I grew up going to uh, various church camps and it was a huge part of my formation and a huge part of my fun as a kid and fun as a teenager. Uh, so yes, all of those things are wonderful, but it doesn't have to end when you're no longer in one of those categories that can sign up for the summer. I recognize when I was just here uh, in my first year at Episcopal Church of the Redeemer in Midlothian, which is where I'm the rector, um, we needed a place for our vestry retreat. And I had attended within the first couple of months being here, a um, clergy um, day at Chanko, and I thought to myself, this is exactly where our clergy, I mean, rather our vestry retreat should be. And so we booked it and we had our vestry retreat there my very first year and it was wonderful. And during my time there and having uh, coffee on the bluff one morning, I knew that this was also a place that Redeemer Episcopal Church Midlothian needed to have their first annual parish family retreat. So we booked it. And we had such an amazing time and so much interest grew from just that first year that our second year, our parish family retreat ended up having so much interest that we booked the entire camp of Chanko. And the reason I tell you this is because what I discovered and what I think a lot of people have discovered at many different ages is just like the people of Iona say about that place in Ireland, Camp Chanko is a thin place, a thin space in which heaven and earth, God and humanity are closer than perhaps you might feel them and experience them in so many other places. So I encourage you, particularly if you are a clergy person, but also if you have perhaps the ear of your clergy person, perhaps through vestry or whatever other means, that you contact them and say, you know, I, I think our parish could do something pretty amazing at Chanko because believe me, what Chanko will do to your parish is even more amazing. Remember, you're never too old for camp. Thank you so much, Robert. That was wonderful. All right, I'm gonna pass it now over to Robert Goodspeed, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about Curcio. Okay, first I'll just make a slight correction to that introduction. My name is Scott Goodspeed, not Robert Goodspeed, but uh, I've known and loved Julie for years, so I know that that was inadvertent. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, hi, uh, I'm here to talk about uh, Curcio, which is a bit of a different aspect of uh, Chanko. Um, you know, this is, um, the Chanko is not just a camp and uh, and a center for uh, group experiences, but uh, it is also a, can be a, uh, and is a center for uh, personal retreat and uh, a center for personal and spiritual growth. And uh, in that regard, I'll, I'll share with you a, uh, a very brief personal story of mine that brought me to uh, Chenko for this purpose. Um, back in 2019, um, very suddenly and unexpectedly, I lost my father um, and, uh, it was a, a very um, harsh uh, turning point in my life that had a very um, 
significant impact, um, uh, most significant. Um, honestly, losing my dad under those circumstances uh, uh, really sort of destroyed my relationship um, with God. Um, I didn't really lose it. Um, it just changed. I had always been a man of faith, but uh, this just shattered me, and I became very angry at God and, uh, and sort of shunned him. And it, uh, as a result, cost me um, also uh, cost me relationships with people because um, uh, you know that's how I I connect with God is is through other people, and um, everything sort of suffered. and And this lasted for many many months. Um, and after a while, a friend of mine, um, Julie, <laughs> uh, had uh, mentioned uh, to me this, um, the, the Curcio at Chenko, uh, this spiritual re uh, retreat where people can go and, uh, and often um, explore their faith and their relationship with God. And uh, reluctantly, I, I sort of agreed to go. Um, wasn't in the best place at the time, but it turns out that it was really one of the best decisions that I ever made. Um, you know, Curcio presented this opportunity for me at a very difficult time to be in this divine space, this absolutely beautiful space of Chanko, um, you know, the divine setting and spend time in the presence of God and in the presence with, of, of other people who were there for the very same purpose, um, namely to seek out and figure out their own relationship with God. And, um, you know, the, the, the setting was just perfect, um, not only in the, in the natural sense, but also that the weekend eliminated all distractions. There were no phones, there were no clocks, there was nothing, just you and these people uh, just sort of seeking and exploring their relationship with God. And um, over the weekend, um, I found that this experience, um, you know, through these connections that I made with these people, I was able to uh, sort of reevaluate and reestablish my connection with God. Um, and honestly, by the end of the weekend, it sort of felt like a, you know, the prodigal son returning to home. And, uh, you know, I, I entered into that weekend resenting God for taking my father away from me. Um, and, um, and I ended the weekend being grateful to God for the connection that he had given me through my father and the gifts that he had given me through my father and the way that uh, the way that he was able to impact me. So uh, Curcio is an amazing spiritual experience. And I can't say that everyone's will be like mine, but it is a very personal growth experience and a very personal growth opportunity. Um, and I would highly recommend it uh, to anyone seeking to just explore their relationship with God and eliminate all distractions and just be in the presence of him and all these people seeking him um, and just to have this amazing experience in this incredible place. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Scott, thank you so much. I apologize. I owe you one. Thank you for sharing your story. And now I'm going to turn it over to Tally, who's going to talk to us with a campaign update. Tally. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tally Banizak, and I worship at Redeemer Episcopal Church in Midlothian, and I am the director for the campaign for Chango. Most of you are now very well familiar with our projects. This campaign, the first of its magnitude in 53 years, included projects to expand, renovate, and improve Chanko's facilities. In June of 2019, we completed the first of our two projects that you see here, Hollerith Dining Hall and the Multipurpose Spirit Center. For the first time since 1988, our 2019 summer campers enjoyed every meal together in one space. This was an extraordinary improvement to our summer camp programming and fellowship. We are incredibly proud to share with you that as of February 1st, 2021, we've achieved 80% of our inspirational $4.4 million goal. All glory be to God. But camp is not the only program to benefit from this campaign. Here, you can see some of the ministries that have found a home in these new spaces. With hope and excitement, we look forward to all these spaces being alive with activity again in the year ahead. 
The bar graph here highlights the progress that our campaign has made from 2017 through 2020. When March of 2020 hit, we needed to focus on more pressing operational needs and the campaign had to take a back burner. However, progress was not halted. Many of you all added a year to your pledge, initiated a new pledge, or accelerated payments on your pledge to help defray our finance costs. Thank you. And now the all important question, where do we go from here? Our brilliant campaign executive committee has engaged in new creative ideas to invite more friends to join in our effort. Many of you will be contacted in the coming months to learn more. I pray that you will answer the call with a yes. And if you're just way too excited about all of this and you simply cannot wait to receive your phone call, my contact information is on this slide. Please feel free to reach out to me. We at Chanko recognize the many benefits of our campaign beyond the dollar amount raised or the buildings constructed. We are strengthening relationships. As we look back on the challenges of 2020 and we look forward to 2021, your ongoing commitment to Chanko's ministry not only inspires us, but it guarantees that we are a place where miracles abound and for generations to come. I invite all of you to join us in this momentous time as we strive to meet our goal and close our campaign in December of 2021. With your support and with our Lord Jesus Christ, all is possible. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Tally, for that wonderful update on our campaign. I'm going to be turning it over now to Megan Dern to start us off a little bit on our college ministries. Megan? Yeah, awesome. Um, my name is Megan Dern. I am the youth missioner for the Diocese of Southern Virginia, um, which basically just means that I am on the bishop staff and I work with most of the youth programming throughout the diocese. Um, one of the programs I work with is our Canterbury programs. Um, we are currently working with four different um, programs right now, and they all look very differently out in Farmville. Um, Hamden, Sydney, and Longwood um, work together. Um, ODU in Norfolk um, is connected with all sorts of churches. CNU right now, we're working with an ecumenical um, um, group. And then um, we actually have somebody from the um, Bruton Parish who's going to talk to you a little bit about their college program and their connection with Chenko. Um, so I am going to have um, Father Charlie Bauer come along and um, talk a little bit more. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, yes, I'm Charlie Bauer. I am the Associate Rector for Christian Formation at Bruton Parish Church in Williamsburg, and I also serve as the chaplain to the Episcopal Church at William and Mary. As someone who serves a variety of ministry settings from children and youth and you. to adults to the college community at William and Mary, Chenko is the spiritual heart of this diocese to all of those people, just as it is for me. As I speak with college students at William and Mary about what they love about Canterbury, those of them who have had the opportunity to attend the annual college retreat at Chenko, all of them rave about this opportunity to, uh, to get away from the weekend for spiritual rest and for growth and for the fellowship they experience with one another and for, from students just like them from all across the diocese. This college retreat is a time and a place where college students from all around the country have a chance to be themselves and to find a safe place to open themselves to God and engage with their faith. And then these students are sent back out into the world to become leaders of all kinds in the church, changed 
forever by this experience and this holy place. This is but one of the lasting legacies of Chanko on the James. And it is now my great pleasure to introduce Hunter Phillips, who is a junior at William & Mary and is serving this year as our Canterbury Junior Warden. And he will speak to you about his own experiences at Chanko. Hi, uh, thank you, Charlie, for the uh, introduction. As he said, my name is Hunter and I am a junior at the College of William & Mary. So I have only been able to go on the Chanko retreat two times now, but already Camp Chanko became a very special place to me personally. And it is a very special place for campus ministry in general. It is a place of spiritual rest and renewal amidst the chaos of our everyday college life. As college students, our lives are extremely hectic and busy and filled with many late nights, writing essays and doing problem sets on one too many cups of coffee, which often gives rise to a lack of time for prayer and spiritual reflection and even spiritual depressions. Coming to Chanko every year has always been one of my favorite parts of campus ministry because it offers that space of rest amidst our busy lives to pray and to just be in fellowship with one another and with God without the cares of school on our minds. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Megan and Charlie and Hunter for sharing your information. I'm going to be turning it back over to Megan here in just a second, but this is your last call for your entry into the raffle. So just in case any of you missed it before, um, if you just send your um, name and which raffle you're interested in to Lexi, it is gonna go either for, you wanna be in the raffle for a summer camp session, a retreat, or specifically a vestry parish retreat. So if you would just send that to Lexi, she's gonna put your names in the bowl and we have a couple more speakers and then we're gonna have that raffle and find out our winners right here and you must be present to win. Julie, Megan? if I could just say something really quick. Um, yes. Please, when you are putting down uh, your information, retreat um, is not specific enough. So if you could please tell me which kind of retreat uh, you, you will have a better chance of winning the one you want. Uh, so just Good. Good advice, Lexi. Thank you so much. Thank you. How, how do we All send right. that, Lexi? Please send it to me in the chat. You can just send it in the everyone or directly to me. Um, My it, chat doesn't seem to be letting me. I tried to send a message to Rick a few minutes ago, and it doesn't seem to be letting me go through. Can you just <laughs> stick me in there? It's Michael Stone. And I take a vestry retreat. <laughs> All right, can do. Thank Sorry. you, Michael. Thank you. So the chat only allows chats to everyone and private chats to our co-hosts. So you can't chat anybody else, but you can chat. Oh, no, I was trying to. I was trying to do it to everyone, but it just yes, didn't. No problem. Yeah. Or All you right, can thanks. chat just Lexi. Megan, would you like to talk to us about happening? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Julie. Um, so again, um, I work with a couple different youth programming throughout the diocese. Um, and one of the ones that I am lucky enough to work with is Happening. Um, I have a wonderful Happening committee that does most of the work that I just kind of hang out with. Um, but we're going to have our youth representative actually come and talk to you guys and tell you a little bit more about Happening. So um, Emily Newsom, if you would um, please tell us more about Happening. Hey there, everybody. Um, I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but <laughs> hey there. Um, I am Emily Newsom, and I live in Richmond, Virginia, and I am a member at the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer. Um, happening is an event held in the fall and the spring for um, youth in grades 10 through 12. It's a Christian experience that helps bring young adults closer to God and their spirit. Um, happening is one of those experiences that a teenager would never want to miss out on. Um, I, my experience with happening was absolutely amazing and I would never get a, give it up for anything. Um, and it, it's held, of course, at the beautiful grounds of Chinko. Um, and I, I was, um, happened in number 70 and then I was also staffed at, um, happening number 71. And it's also just like Curcio, um, just like Scott said with Mr. Uh, with Curcio, I'm, fruit salad with my words. <laughs> it's a very personal and moving experience um, for teenagers. And it's just, it's one of those experiences that's great to like help you improve your relationship with God. And I, I, I would highly recommend it to any teenager that wants to go. 
Thank you, Emily. That was awesome. Um, so the last group that um, we're going to highlight today that I work with is the Episcopal Youth Community. Um, and we actually have a board member here today. Our board is elected every year. Um, they go through a interview process and then the bishop will appoint um, the nine representatives and those representatives come from churches throughout the diocese and we're always looking for um, great EYC board representatives so if you have anybody in mind please let me know um, but for now we're going to have um, Lucas Philpitt talk a little bit more about what the EYC does at Chango. Uh, hello. Uh, I am Lucas Philpott from Norfolk, Virginia, and um, you know, sorry, I did not prepare well for this. Give me a second. Um, so the e the EYC for Chanko does a lot of organization for events su such as November Weekend, which is kind of it's like a retreat that hap that happens every year, as well as May Weekend and a couple of other things that I haven't gotten a chance to experience yet. Um, it does a, uh, um, Lucas, what are a couple of the reasons you joined the UIC board that you were sharing with me earlier today? Okay, thank you. Um, some reasons I joined were one for social experiences because I don't, I'm bad at, I'm bad at doing those. I wanted to have a say in some of the things that happened around the diocese, especially with youth programs. And also it gives a good sense of community. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lucas, for sharing that with us. Thank you, Megan, for sharing with us about all the ministries that you work with. So happy to have you um, as our missioner here in the diocese. And so that brings us to our raffle. So Lexi, are we ready to draw names? No, Lexi's not ready. <laughs> um, I, if you can do just maybe a couple of questions, they're still um, approximately Give me five minutes. No problem. That's perfect. No problem. So I see a hand up for Jennifer White. Jennifer, do you have a question for us? If you'd like to unmute yourself. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Um, I had I had put something in the chat and like the gentleman before me, I don't see any. It hasn't come up in the little screen and I don't know how to get it to go from just my typing into the into the role of messages. No problem. So um, would you like to be added into a um, camp retreat or vestry retreat raffle? Vestry, please. All right. So Jennifer White into the vestry retreat, Lexi, if you don't mind. Um, I There may have been some questions that got posted in the chat. I'm going to rely on my co-host, Gareth or Tally. If you guys have seen any questions pop up throughout the evening that we could go to. But everyone else, if you have a question, please do find your raise hand button and feel free to raise your hand. And we would love to hear from you and happy to answer your questions. Julie, I will take this moment while Lexi is preparing the raffle just to let people know that one of the raffle drawings just occurred. And it is very exciting news to let everybody know that Roy Hoffman has won half a dozen cinnamon rolls. <laughs> All he has to do is drive here to pick them up. All right, Roy Hoffman, half a dozen cinnamon rolls. Congratulations. All right, I got a hand up now. David Wynn, if you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, um, for, for those of you that are really old like me, uh, Chanko is a wonderful place for a retreat. Um, I'm a member of a dispersed monastic order. Uh, Galilee is my parish. And uh, once a month, uh, when they can fit me in, I go there for a day, 24 hours of fasting and prayer and silence. And so if you want to go, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, Chanko is a wonderful resource. You can walk and meditate in the woods. You can sit in the cabin they give you. Uh, you can sit overlooking the river. 
And it's just a terrific experience, a little different than the ones you've mentioned. For those of you that want to go by yourself, it's a very, very welcoming place. The personnel and everything there are really wonderful. So thank you. David, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that uh, with us. Thank you so much. All right, do we have any other questions? Uh, Chuck, your vegetable risotto's in the mail. <laughs> Lexi, you let me know when you're ready for those raffles. Meanwhile, hey, keep taking- Julie, this is Nancy. If I could, could uh, comment on one thing real quick. Yep. I owe all of you a Superman swing. I know that it is still gonna happen. I don't want you to think that I have uh, snuck out and not gonna fulfill my commitment to last year's um, challenged. If we raised a certain amount in our annual fund, I would do the Superman swing. Timing has just been difficult to get out there under all the COVID restrictions and just our own family restrictions. So my cape is waiting for me, tally promises, and I will do it before we open camp up for 2021. Maybe I'll do it because we're opening camp up for 2021. But thank you all of you who uh, pushed me to this challenge and I promise I will fulfill it. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> um, I have another hand up, Ellen Gillum. Yes, I had a question uh, about the Canterbury Retreat and the College Retreat. Yeah. In that we have colleges in, in this diocese in which there is no Canterbury Club Association. Can any college student attend either or both of those retreats, no matter yeah. what other affiliations they have? Yes, definitely. Um, we put we put the information out in the e news in the past. Um, William and Mary has hosted it, and so I think that the diocese is kind of taking more of a lead on it moving forward. But yes, we would love students from um, colleges throughout the diocese, or if you have students from the diocese who diocese who've gone to schools outside, um, we take all college students. So, thank you. Yeah, of course. Great question, Ellen. Thank you so much. And thank you, Megan. All right. Any other questions? And or uh, Lexi, are we ready for a raffle yet? I think so. I think I got everyone. Um, all right. So if we're ready, you ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. Drum roll, awesome. please. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with our vestry retreat. Let me just take it up in the box. I'll close my eyes. And, okay. Um, John Spears, Spires, John Spires. Congratulations on half off of your vestry retreat. Um, I am going to ask that you uh, email um, not email, uh, put in the chat directly to me right now, your email. Um, it got to the point where there are so many of you interested that I couldn't write down emails because I was scribbling away. Um, so John, uh, please send me your email and we'll hook you up with a vestry retreat. Awesome. All right. And now we'll go with our personal individual retreat. Mix it up, mix it, mix it, mix it. And it looks like we have Stuart Tab. Stuart Tab. Also, please email me or, or put in the chat your email so that we can uh, hook you up with the individual retreat. Um, and lastly, the big one. The one we're all waiting for the, well, not everyone, no. You've already won the one you waited for. All right. Camp, summer camp. Here we go. All right. Uh, Catherine Martin. Catherine Martin, congratulations on half off your summer camp. Uh, yours was one of the ones I did, in fact, get the email for. So you do not have to send me your email. Um, so those are our raffle winners. Congratulations, you guys. Thanks for participating. And thank you so much for being here. And I guess I'm going to turn it back over to Julie or whoever is taking over from here. Thank you so much, Lexi. That's so exciting and wonderful. Congratulations to all of our winners. And yeah, we still have a little bit of time if we have any more questions. 
Um, so please raise those hands. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Gareth, did you want to say anything or Bishop Haynes before, while we wait for more hands? Julie, I'll just reiterate that this year is has been a very confusing year, a lot of turmoil, a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty, and things change every moment, it seems. Uh, right now, we are very grateful for the way the, the test numbers are going down in the state of Virginia, but you know we live with quite a bit of uncertainty. So if folks are having questions, wondering what this summer will look like, it's, it's something that we very much want to keep people informed. We welcome your questions. Even if we don't have all the answers now, we will keep you informed and give you answers as we have them. Please feel free to give us a call. Feel free to give us an email. And thanks so much for being with us tonight. And Julie, you, I, I would like to at least say hello to everyone. I was struggling just a few minutes ago to find my mute button and uh, everything was falling out of my lap and um, it was it was quite the chaos here. But um, I um, just want to say how proud I am of the Chenko staff for the way they held things together this year in this incredibly difficult year. Um, I, I still remember the evening that we had to decide not to move forward with summer camp for this summer and just how devastating that was. And with the, uh, the governor's announcement um, today and the percent positivity rate, the way it's declining in Virginia, I find myself getting really, really excited um, about being at camp myself this summer. Uh, hope to be there as often as I can. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Haynes, so much. We really appreciate that. And um, I did have a question pop up in the chat and I have a hand up. Um, we're gonna stick around and answer questions. Thank you to everyone for coming. If you, if you wanna hear, ask questions or hear, stick around, but if not, thank you again for being here. Um, one question I saw in the chat is, will there be a work weekend to prep for summer camp? And Gareth, I'll let you answer it. And, but I, I mean, I would think, yes, if we can make it happen, there'll be a work weekend, right? <laughs> That is our current goal, and uh, the way things are trending, it looks quite possible that we'll be able to do that. As folks may or may not be aware, uh, we have had events that weren't able to happen this spring, but as things are trending in a positive direction, we're looking forward to, to having work weekends and other events leading up to the summer. Fingers crossed. Keep your eyes on the Chanko Chatter. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gareth. And I have a hand up from Steve Rabel. Yeah, this is really a question that I, I, you may not be able to answer now, but when the, the COVID stuff comes up, just it's a pressing question in my household. Um, dining hall is obvious. This is for summer. Dining hall is clearly indoors, as is the spiritual center. The PAV is clearly outdoors. The question is that has come up in my household is what are the chalets going to be considered? Are they going to be considered indoors or because they're screened, are they going to be considered outdoors with with the wearing of the masks etc 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 i'm not really expecting an answer at this moment in time but that's a that's a question that would like to, the child in my house would like to have that question answered sooner <laughs> rather than later <laughs> steve it's an excellent question and big thanks to uh gabby or Alyssa for that question tell them our uh big hello for thanking of thinking of us and asking the question and you're right there's still some things undecided we know that there are conversations going on at the governor's office about protocols for sleeping in dormitories and indoor versus outdoor space when it's screened. And those are answers we don't have yet. So I'm afraid they're gonna to have to tune back in. Uh, what did we say it was? March 1st? Was that the date I said? Yes. All right, well, thank you so much for that question. Any others? Seen some great chat going on. Great chatter in the chat, I should say. I haven't seen any other questions though. Have I missed any? All right, not seeing any hands up and not seeing any other questions. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Gareth. Thank you all for being here tonight. See you this summer.